friends, welcome to my channel. This is Allison, and today I have two fun shaker cards to share with you using all the joy release from Simon Says Stamp. So here are the cards that I will be sharing today. And by the way, this is part of a blog hop. So I'm gonna leave a link to my blog below. Uh, be sure to check that out because you have a chance to win a gift card to Simon Says Stamp. All right, here is the die that we'll be using for both shakers. It is the Very Merry cover die. And here is what it looks like when you cut it out. And you can see it cuts out the ornament with the words and then the letters for the other words. So I'm gonna pop out all these letters and we're gonna make the first card by coloring the letters. And I'm using my Olo markers and I'm just gonna use three shades of red for these letters and I'm gonna make kind of an ombre look. So I'm starting with the lighter shade of red at the top and then I'm gonna just put the, bot the darker shade at the bottom half and then right in the middle, I'm gonna come in with the medium shade and I'll blend it out with the lightest shade. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for, for all the letters that are part of the panel. And really easy. These Olo markers are so juicy that it makes it really quick. All right, so there are the red letters and now I'm gonna use some turquoise shades for the letters that are part of the ornament. And you can see on the piece of paper there, I, I did try some green colors, but I decided I wanted um, turquoise and red. I, I thought it was kind of a fun retro color scheme. So these colors were a little harder to blend just because that darkest color that I used was a little, you know, quite a bit darker than my middle shade, but I really love how they turned out. All right, so on the back of my panel, um, I have recut a, another panel and all the letters that are part of the panel are in there. You'll see when I flip it over. I'm using score tape to put on the back of this panel because I need to adhere some acetate to it. This is gonna be, you know, the front of the shaker. So I'm gonna finish, there's a lot of score tape on there as you can see. So now I am going to take some acetate and this acetate is from Simon Says Stamp and these come in half sheets, half of a letter sized piece of paper and I cut it down to size and now I'm just going to adhere that to the back of this panel. Now both of these shakers today are pretty easy shakers uh, although they're very different in how I make them. So this first one is the pretty traditional way where I use foam tape and this is my all to new foam tape and I've already put one layer of foam tape on the back and now I'm coming in with a second layer. So you can do it this way or you can just fold the tape over onto itself to make it a double layer and then you can adhere it to the back of your card base or to the back of your card panel. Um, I just chose to do it this way today. So when you do put the first layer, to, if you do it this way and you put the first layer of foam tape down, make sure you take the strip off the first layer like I just did before you adhere the second layer. And so now I'm just coming in with the last pieces of the second layer. And now before I put my shaker bits in, I'm just gonna take an anti-static powder tool and rub it along the sides of that foam tape. And that's just to prevent any of my sequins from sticking too much to the sides. So you can see I've already put in some red and silver flat little shaker bits. And now I'm coming in with some iridescent confetti. 
And then I'm going to come in and just add some clear stars. And I will have links to these shaker bits below. Um, the red and the silver discs are really old in my stash. I, do, I don't really know where I got those. Um, but they're really fun. I love flat shaker bits. It just makes it so much easier to fill shakers, especially if you don't want it to be a thick shaker. So now that I have the amount of sequins that I want in there, I can pull the release tape and I just have a plain piece of white paper that I'm putting in the back and that's going to enclose the shaker. And there you go. All right, so now I can adhere this to my card base. Uh, my card base is A2 sized, so that's four and a quarter wide by five and a half inches tall. And so, like I said, the letters on this panel that I had cut are, are still in there. And when I had put score tape on the back of that panel, that kept those letters in place. So now I can come in with my colored letters and put them on top. So I don't want a whole lot of dimension on top of the card because, you know, we have double thickness of foam tape already for the shaker, but I did want these colored letters to stand out just a little bit from the card front. So it's really easy just to glue them right on top of the white letters that are, that are inlaid into that panel. All right, so we will finish that up. And then once I have done that, I'm going to grab the, the ornament negative piece, and I'm gonna lay that back in there right on top of the acetate. And this is just gonna help me place these turquoise letters. So I'm just gonna glue these right onto the acetate, and I'm using my Gina K Connect glue for this and again really easy so really I think the longest part of this card was coloring the letters all right so these little stars that are on the panel I cut uh, I cut the panel again from silver metallic cardstock. So I'm gluing those silver stars onto the card front. And the bow and the little topper for the ornament, again, I'm, I'm taking from that same piece of silver cardstock that I had cut with the die. Now I am going to put a colored bow on top, but I just wanted to get the base of the bow in there with the silver. And then there's little pieces that I'm about to put in around the bow that, you know, complete the topper of the ornament. So I wanted a little, like one more layer of bow on top of this. So that's why I put the silver bow on there, even though you won't end up seeing it. All right, so now I have those little pieces in there. Now, I just wanna cut the bow. So I'm just using a small piece of paper and I'm gonna tape it onto the die. So you don't need to waste a whole big piece of paper if all you wanna do is cut out the bow or if I wanted to cut out more stars or something like that. So I had originally cut it out of this turquoise, it's kind of like a satin metallic cardstock. Um, you'll see I'll change that in a minute. But for now, I am taking a white gel pen and I'm just going to add some little highlights to the letters on the ornament. I feel like the letters are getting a little bit lost with all that those shaker bits going on in the background. So uh, I feel like the white highlights help. Now white gel pen highlights are something that I really love and I admire people who 
who do them so well and so often, I, I forget to do it a lot. Uh, and then when I do remember, I get, sometimes I get kind of nervous. You know, like I've done all this work and then you come in with the white gel pen and then you mess it up. So I don't know. I think when you do it, I think it is so worth it. And I do think this helped the card design a lot. So now I am coming in with just a second layer of silver stars just to make them stand out a little bit. And I, th I feel like these stars and even the ornament have kind of a retro look, which is why I wanted to go with this retro color scheme. So once I finish that, I am going to, well, you can see I've replaced the bow. So I made another bow and I colored it with those same turquoise markers. And now I'm coming in here with an embellishment. Uh, this embellishment is from Pink Fresh Studio. And that's just gonna complete it. And here it is. And it's always fun to hear that shaker sound. So that was my first card, and I really intended on just taking that little negative piece and doing a two-for-one kind of idea, but I decided to make another shaker. So here you can see I've already layered three pieces of this little ornament, and you know I just cut it out three more times. And now I'm going to lay this fourth piece on top. And this is another way to build a shaker, especially when you have letters like this or, you know, thin openings and you, you don't want to deal with foam tape. So now I am tracing the ornament onto white paper because I do need a backer for my ornament. And the die, you know, it doesn't cut out a solid ornament. So I'm just going to cut it out myself and I'll just fussy cut it. And I'm going to try to stay in inside the lines. Um, I will end up tweaking it just a little bit to make sure that you don't see it when I when you glue it behind the ornament. So here I have a little piece of acetate. And I'm going to use my Gina K Connect glue again to adhere that uh, acetate to the back of this ornament. Um, now, I know you see me sometimes changing adhesives. Uh, when I'm gluing things that aren't paper to paper, I tend to gravitate towards my connect glue. Um, when I'm doing paper to paper, I, I love my Barely Art glue or Barely Arts glue. So now I'm just trimming off the excess acetate around the edges and now I can glue this ornament that has the acetate on the back onto my stack of white ornaments. So that was a silver ornament that I had cut out. All right, this is Distressed Rock Candy Glitter and guess what? We are going to make our own shaker bits. So I'm just pouring some of this glitter into a little plastic cup and I have some alcohol ink and I'm just going to put a few drops in there and then I'm just going to stir it and I I use plastic forks I don't know use whatever you have you could use a spatula I didn't want to show all the stirring because I know some people might get um, dizzy uh, watching me stir that really fast so I, I stirred it for a few minutes. Um, it's really easy to stir and the color mixes well. Uh, now I'm adding kind of an orangey red color because I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get the right color mix. And the great thing about alcohol inks is you can make whatever color you want of this glitter. And it's really fun. So I live in Colorado. I didn't really need to spread it out on this towel to dry, but if you live in a humid climate, you might need to just put on a paper towel to dry. And you can see I've now put them in, well, I made other colors while I was at it, but I put them in these little glass vials. I just use like a little funnel to get them in there. And now I have them for future projects. 
So now I'm just going to pour the glitter into the letters. And I will say the only hard part of this was it was it was hard to know how much to put in here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that I get it all off the the white paper because I need to glue my backer to this and obviously if there's a bunch of glitter on there that's going to make it difficult. So I'm using the flat part of my finger and just trying to wipe all of the excess away. And here I'm coming in with more. I really didn't need to. <laughs> But it, 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 again, it was hard to tell. I probably put too much, especially in the, the two letter Y's. You'll see when I'm finished. But I think it's fun to color your own glitter and make your own shaker bits. Uh, the only thing about using just glitter in your shaker and here obviously I'm using glue I'm gonna glue that backer to enclose the shaker the only thing about using this is and I didn't even bother turning the noise up for you here because you cannot hear it it's glitter it doesn't make that shaker noise you know the shakers are very satisfying to listen to I'm gonna call this more of a stealth shaker all right, I have my Misty out and I have my stamp and stencil mat in there and I now have a card base. And I don't have anything else in my Misty because I have a cling stamp. This is the new not quite a dot cling stamp. And so you have to take your mouse pad or whatever else you usually keep in your Misty out. And so that stamp and stencil mat from Simon is flat. So it's going to keep my card base in place without having to use tape. Um, and now I am inking up my stamp with some unicorn white pigment ink from Hero Arts. And I love, love, love this new stamp. Uh, it's called Not Quite a Dot, and it, it isn't a dot. It almost looks like little stars, and it almost mimics the little stars on on this die panel. So I thought it was kind of a fun combination to use. So you'll see I stamped my panel three times with this white ink. And there's what it looks like. Hopefully you can see that those are not quite dots. All right, so after the fact, I decided I wanted to ink up the sides of my panel. So I, I put tape along the back and I'm putting paper on the inside just to protect the inside and the back from getting any ink on there. And I just chose a color of Pink Fresh Studio ink and I'm gonna come in and ink blend the sides. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't do the greatest job of ink blending the edges. Um, if you've watched my videos before, I, I do this a lot. I wanted to create uh, kind of a glow in the middle I thought it would be cool, especially with these little dots that look like stars. So that was my intention um, to create a glow effect. Uh, again, eh, it wasn't the greatest ink blending, but you win some, you lose some. <laughs> I think the ornament shaker in the middle uh, distracts from everything else. So. All right, I'm almost finished doing that. And then we can move on to finishing this card. All right, so here's my shaker. And I have to get the, the other parts of the letters in there, the R's. So I'm putting the negative pieces of, well, I'm putting the R's back into the ornament. And I will use those as placeholders so I know where to put the middles. So this is very much like what I did on the last card where I used the ornament to put the letters in. Now I'm using the letters to put the little, the other little pieces of the letters in. So I'm just gonna glue those in. And now the letters look 
more complete. All right, so I have cut out an ornament topper and I did that with this die set. This is the Radiant Ornament Layer Set from Birch Press Design. This is my go-to set for when I want an ornament topper for anything. And uh, it's one of my favorite ornament dies ever as well. So before I attach this little ornament topper, I'm going to just attach some, this is some silver embossing thread. Uh, so I just wanna attach that first. Now I'm gluing the ornament to the card base and I have cut some more star, actually these stars may have been from all those white ornaments that I had cut. Remember I had cut all these layers for this ornament. So I had some extra stars and I'm gluing them onto the panel. And now I have a little piece of foam tape right above the ornament. You'll see it in a second. And now I'm gonna glue my ornament topper. So part of, part of it's gonna sit right on top of the ornament. The rest of it is gonna be supported by that little piece of foam tape. And then I have this little bow. Again, this is from the, the same die set from the panel um, and I cut it out of silver glitter cardstock this time. All right, to complete the card, I am using Oh My Stars Confetti. This is from Trinity Stamps and this confetti is so fun. So at first I, I just started playing around with, you know, placement and I thought I wanted to put a bunch on here, but uh, in the end, I, I tried to be a little bit minimal and I kept it within the part of the card where it, it's lighter, so where it glows and where you can see the other stars. So there we go, there is the card. And I'm really happy with how they both turned out. And again, these are two very different ways of building shakers and I thought it was a fun thing to show you today. Thanks so much for joining me. And again, don't forget to go to my blog for your chance to win a gift card to Simon Says Stamp. I appreciate you being here. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.